Well, good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer on Saturday. Once again, let's start with some words from Jesus calling. Let me help you through this day. The challenges you face are far too great for you to handle alone. You are keenly aware of your helplessness in the scheme of events that you face. This awareness opens up a choice to doggedly go it alone or to walk with me in humble steps of dependence. Actually, this choice is continually before you, but difficulties highlight the decision-making process. So consider it all joy whenever you are enveloped in various trials. These are gifts from me reminding you to rely on me alone. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and I lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. And so this morning's psalm is Psalm 61. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with a fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever, and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the requests of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God for ever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing your praise. Day after day I will fulfil my vows. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. So our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God... Sorry, that's wrong. I did that yesterday. <laughs> so our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 9. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Then God said to Noah and his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off from the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, Let this be a sign that I will make between myself and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it, and I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. 
God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, says the Lord. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says the Lord our God, you shall be nursed and carried on her arm. As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Thus says our God, I will comfort you and you shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Our second reading this morning is taken from the book of Philippians, Chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, Children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labour in vain. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. And in the same way, you must also be glad and rejoice with me. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. We say the Benedictus together. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. So let us pray. Lord, so much of the news is dominated by the coronavirus and it is an anxious time for so many people. We think of those who are elderly and on their own, those who have no family to look after them. We think of those who find isolation incredibly hard, those who for their mental well-being need to be with people but can't. We think of those who are battling with anxiety and depression and who wrestle with tremendous fear. We think of families who have children and who live in flats with no parks nearby. Families who live with elderly relatives and who need to protect them. 
We think of loved ones that we have not seen for weeks and may not see for months. Lord, you know each of our names. You know our fears, our difficulties and our needs. And so, Lord, please hear us and our cry for help. Lord, it is now more than ever that we need to hear your words, do not be afraid. It is now more than ever that we need to hear your words, my peace I give to you. We pray this morning for our Prime Minister, who in spite of contracting this illness continues to work on our behalf. Bless him and his family and restore him to full health. We pray, Lord, for our NHS, who in spite of lacking resources, continue to offer their sacrificial service. We pray for our doctors, nurses, health visitors and carers, all who devote their time for the well-being of others. Lord, in your great mercy, have compassion upon our communities, our nation and our world, and provide the necessary knowledge for us to develop and provide a cure. We pray for those watching and praying with us this morning, that you will inspire them through the promises of your word, reminding them that they are not alone and that you are with them. Lord, hear us as we cry out to you. Console us when we are afraid and heal us when we are sick. We pray especially today for your people here at St Mary's and St James. Lord, look after those that you have placed in my care here and restore us soon that we might once again worship you together. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant, Lord, that we who are baptised into the death of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection through his merits, who died and was buried and rose again for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we come to the end of this week, can I remind you that you can join us on Sunday at 10 o'clock for our morning service. Friends, hold fast to that which you know to be true, that God loves you with an everlasting love, and that in Christ he has promised never to leave you or forsake you. So may his peace, the peace that transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>